It's very important when we look at weight loss and when we look at like insulin sensitivity that we don't look at it in this really singular myopic way, right? We don't look at things as, well, what can I do right now in this one instance to improve my insulin sensitivity right now? What if there were ways that we could actually affect even our genes to positively influence insulin sensitivity and ultimately our weight? Well, I ask that because there's some interesting data coming out surrounding the world of lemon and lime peels, specifically the phenolic compounds that you'll find in the peels. So let's look at some data because this is very, very intriguing stuff. Okay, so this first study was looking at weight loss specifically and it was published in the Journal of Medicinal Food and it looked at one specific polyphenol that is typically in lemon and lime peel pretty specifically, okay, erythritin. Now in this particular case, they gave it to obese mice. I know it's a rodent model study, but we still look at this stuff, right? It's important. So obese mice that were consuming a high fat diet for 16 weeks, okay, they found some really interesting things. Half the mice did not have this polyphenol, and half the mice did. The mice that had the polyphenol ended up having an 11% decrease in overall body weight. Okay, well, calories were matched. Both groups ate the exact same amount, easy to control in a rodent model, very difficult to do in humans for obvious reasons. 11% reduction in body weight. Okay, we gotta understand mechanisms. What's potentially going on here? Well, they also saw that there was a 41% decrease in adipocyte genes that were related with lipid uptake. Okay, so lipid uptake is gonna be things like lipoprotein lipase, things that allow for lipids, fats, to get into a cell to ultimately be stored. So when you have a reduction in that, or genes that are associated with that, you are literally bottlenecking, I shouldn't say literally, but you are bottlenecking the ability to store fat. So that 11% decrease in body weight could have ultimately even gone larger because that bottleneck would just eventually trigger a larger cascade. Now this isn't saying that you're magically going to have this effect by having lemon peel and lime peel, but if we understand what's going on, maybe we can start implementing this into our life even more. They also found that there was a reduction in lipogenesis related genes, genes that were associated with fat formation in general. So a very positive thing going on here. So don't be throwing out the lime juice, but then it went a little further. Okay, insulin sensitivity, which is such a huge piece, a huge, huge piece. Okay, they found that there was a 24% decrease in fasting glucose with those that had the polyphenols. Okay, and then there was a 36% reduction in insulin. When you reduce insulin for that dramatic of an amount for a long period of time, you end up having a pretty powerful long tail cas cascade because think about what's happening. Insulin resistance is where the cells are essentially becoming like numb to insulin. They see it so much because it's circulating all the time, trying to get glucose lower, that they just say, I'm done, like, forget it. I just don't even wanna to listen to you anymore, right? Well, if you give them a break from that white noise for a minute, eventually they'll come back. So we can imply that based upon this data that we could do this for a period of time and maybe improve us metabolically. It'd be pretty darn cool. Now what we have to understand here is there's a couple of different effects. One that we don't talk about a lot are gonna be gut phenolic metabolites. Okay, these phenolic compounds directly have an impact when they get absorbed and utilized in the liver and things like that. But when they actually get into the gut, they have a metabolic effect too. And what we forget oftentimes is that our gut regulates very, very much so what gets absorbed. You might absorb and utilize nutrients in a completely different capacity than I do. And much of it can be dictated by these gut phenolic metabolites. So when we consume things like lemon peel and lime peel, not only do the phenolic compounds affect our gut, but the small amounts of fiber, okay, things like pectin, can dictate what happens too. Okay? These prebiotic fibers, they feed the gut bacteria, which can then affect what are called short chain fatty acids, basically a byproduct of bacteria feeding on fiber. These short chain fatty acids act as what are called signaling devices where they can communicate with our cells to regulate how glucose is absorbed into a cell. Okay, this is just one section. I have a completely different section to talk about as well. Okay, so with that, it's very important. And people kind of think about that like, okay, well, does that mean more bacteria is gonna be better? Not necessarily. It's about having the right bacteria that will feed on the prebiotic fibers because if you have bad bacteria and they feed on prebiotic fibers, 
then the bad bacteria grow, right? So you gotta be very careful. So that's where, yes, a, pre, a prebiotic and a probiotic that are putting the right thing in place could be beneficial because then you're planting the quote unquote seed, so to speak, for the bacteria that are good to be able to feed on the fiber you're eating. I put a link down below for the one that I recommend personally. It's the one that I use, it's called Seed. They are a sponsor on this channel, but they are the one that I personally use. So that link is down below. You can use the code THOMAS15 and it saves you 15% off. Really cool company. They have what is called a symbiotic. So it's a capsule inside of a capsule, two capsules kind of in one, cool tech, okay, with a prebiotic and a probiotic. So that way you're getting these multi-stage deliveries, so to speak, for proper or the best kind of colonization that we're looking for. So a really interesting company puts their money where their mouth is with microbiome research. That link is down below again, 15% off when you use that link. And a big thank you to Seed for the support on this channel. Now, we also have to remember, this is a very, very, very big piece, that the polyphenols can also have an effect on inhibiting what is called alpha amylase and alpha glucosidases. These are what break down carbohydrates into simple sugars for us to digest. If you have a polysaccharide or a disaccharide, sugar starches that are kind of bound together, they have to be cleaved down and broken down into monosaccharides, individual saccharides, to ultimately get absorbed. So if everything is functioning in the way that it would be normally, you're breaking those things down and those simple sugars get absorbed and increase your blood sugar. But if those polysaccharides and disaccharides don't really get broken down into monosaccharides, they don't hop on the transporter and get into the bloodstream and raise our glucose. They actually just get passed through and ultimately become gut food. Well, it looks like the phenolic compounds can impact the enzymes that would normally break down those bonds. So if those bonds are not, like, are they remaining? They're not getting broken down? These sugars remain bound together and don't absorb the same. This happens within our gut and it very well could be a result of the phenolic compounds, at least based upon the research that we're seeing. Now, the other side is a piece that I've talked about in other videos that is very important, the pure acidity of the actual juice itself. This is why I feel like you should use the whole lime and the whole lemon, right? Because you get the phenolic compounds that are approximately 13% higher in the peel than in the juice, based upon a journal of food measurement and a characterization study. But you also get a really interesting effect from the juice just being highly acidic, similar to vinegar. Okay, this is going to affect salivary amylase. So this affects carbohydrate digestion when it starts in your mouth. So the juice is impacting breakdown of carbs and slowing it down by actually reducing what your gut creates because it's sensing more acidity. So you have a three-pronged approach, okay? You have inhibition of alpha amylase, inhibition of alpha glucosidases, and inhibition of salivary amylase in the mouth if you eat the whole lemon. So a little bit of peel zested on your food, a little bit of juice in your water, and that's what we're looking at. Anyway, I'm just a guy on the internet, so what do I know? I'll see you tomorrow.